Hi everyone, my name is Wagner Landgraf and in this presentation I'm going to talk about TMS Aurelius. Aurelius is an ORM framework for Delphi. ORM stands for Object Relational Mapping, which is a technique to map your objects to the database. So usually you, the tables in your database will hold information about classes you have in your application records to objects and columns represent properties and fields of those objects. There are many advantages of using an ORM framework. Usually you write your business rules using objects instead of dealing with SQL. So your client becomes more abstract in the sense that you can easily switch between different database servers and you don't have to do with the specific SQL syntax and remembering table names and field names. So you just code with a higher abstraction level which is your classes and objects. With TMS Aurelius, which is a on ORM framework, you can have multi-database applications because Aurelius supports all the popular databases like My MySQL Oracle, Firebird, Interbase, and it works with Windows, Mac, iOS, and we are working now to support Android. And you, you can also use many different database access components like DB Express and FireDuck, or even more third party components. It supports REST, it has built in JSON serialization, and data binding using either live bindings or a specific Aurelius dataset. My intention now is to show an ORM application using TMS Aurelius step by step. The application is already written, so I'm not spending time here writing code and designing forms, but I have split it in the several steps that show how the application evolves since its initial step until it's complete, so we can follow the idea behind building such applications. The application I'm going to show you is the is an issue tracker application, and in this step, we are we the application only implemented the users. So uh, there is a form here for listing users, and a form here to edit users. So since we are working with a ORM framework, the main part of the code is the part that declare the classes. So here is our, our entity classes, our business classes for, for this application. And it, we just have, it's a simple application, so we have just users, projects, and issues. So for example, issue belongs to a project, here, is assigned to a user, here, and other than this are just simple properties like ID, subject, description, two enumerated properties for priority and status, and one property here that is a list of objects for the comments for the issue. Just note that the, the only difference here is that the object, the properties that represent associations are just in object instance. So for example, to this issue belongs to a project and it, it just has a, pro a project property that holds a reference to a T project object. Also note that the class doesn't need to inherit from any base class. There are no specific data types. It's just integer, string, and regular data types. So this application currently is just creating new users and allows you to edit it and delete. But it's not saving yet in a database or in any persistent storage. So the user is gone after I close the the form. How it's re it's written. How the classes are used. For example, here in the editor 
it's just a simple class the the components here in the form are simple t edit controls and the property just has a the sorry the form just has a property named user which holds a reference to a t user object when we, we want to edit a user we just call a function edit user and pass the user object to the form all it does is just update the content of the edits when we set the user object so here you just copy the user dot name to the ed name dot text and if the user clicks ok it just does the reverse it copies the value of the e of the edit to the object that's it it just edits the user in memory and for here in the listing form is the same approach first it loads the user list calling repository.git users this is the, the concept the new concept of this application because the repository is an object that you can use to persist your users how it is declared in the repository base we have this abstract class that have that has for now four methods save user get user get users and delete user the methods work with the t user instance or a list of t user instance so the list is here the list in form has a field named f repository which is a field of t repository instance and to get the users we just call repository dot get users it retrieves for us a t list of t user objects and we just iterate through that list and add the names of the users to the list box we have here just regular controls a t list box as usual and for example to create a new user we create an instance of t user object pass that instance to our user form that edits the user object and if the user clicks ok we call save user method from our repository how it is working now and why it's not saving because I have implemented a t memory repository for now that it's not the scope of this epic of this presentation but it's just holds uh, all the users in an internal dictionary so that's why it's working but it does not persist anywhere because it, the objects the user objects are just in a dictionary in the next step I'm going to show you how to use Aurelius to persist these objects in a database in this step we are going to implement persistence using Aurelius. Here is our entities unit with uh, our classes. The only difference here is that we added the Aurelius.mapping.attributes unit and we mark the classes we want to persist in the database. Basically all you need is add the entity attribute that indicates that the class will be persisted in the database and then you need to map the details like to which table these objects will be saved to which columns the fields and properties will be mapped to and alternatively you can use the auto mapping auto mapping attribute that makes Aurelius do everything for you automatically so basically what this auto mapping do is create a table for example in the class t project it will create a table named project with two columns id and name so pretty much that's what we have to do and the only difference here is that we use a table attributes to define a specific name for this table so instead of table name will be instead of the table name to be user it will be tracker users 
So that's just an example about how to use specific mapping configuration. So the classes are mapped and all you need now is to persist them. To do that we have inherited a new class from the T repository class named T database repository where we implement the methods, the abstract methods declared in the T repository. Uh, to persist the objects in the database we use this Aurelius object named T object manager. This, this class uh, uh, provides you methods for saving and loading the objects from the database according to the mapping we have defined it in the as I show you previously. To create an instance of T object manager we just need to pass a parameter which is a IDB connection interface. This IDB connection interface represents a database connection and it abstracts the connection so you can use DB Express or FireDuck or anything. For the object manager it doesn't matter, all we, it needs to receive is an IDB connection. I will show you how to create such interface. But once the T object manager is created in, and put in the F manager field, we can just use it to save our objects. So for example, this method save user receives a T user object as a parameter. And all we need to do is call method save or update from the object manager. Then call flush to, persi to persist the, the changes made in memory. So this is where things happen here. Aurelius will receive the instance, we'll analyze it to see if it has an ID, what are the, what are the values of the properties, and then we'll create the SQL statements to either update the record in the database or if the record doesn't exist it will insert a new one. Finally all we have to what I have to explain to you how is how to create such connection IDB connection interface. So our repository just to create a repository we need this inter this interface and here is how it's created. This is the SQLite factory, a uh, class I created to create the database repository. And here's the method getConnection. This getConnection calls this adapter that creates an interface, the IDB connection interface, based on a SQLite file name. So the database will be created here and the IDB connection interface can be used anywhere to create the object managers. I have used this factory approach here so I can show you how to easily switch between SQLite and Firebird but you can use once you have created the IDB connection you can use it for the T object manager. In the main form of the application here I'm just saying that I'm going to use the SQLite factory to create my IDB connection interfaces and this is used here. If you remember our form where we list our users. We have the same F repository object here, but when we create the repository, instead of creating it directly here, I'm calling cr global factory create repository. So the factory will create a repository for me. In this, in this step we are using SQLite, but we can change it later. Now you can see that there is already data in the database 
and I'm simply accessing the data in the SQLite database and data is persisted. It's the same application as we had before. The forms are dealing with T user objects and the only difference is that we are using Aurelius to persist the, the data. Let me open step 4. In this step, I'm going to show you how to do visual binding between the objects returned by Aurelius and the controls without needing to manually set the value of the controls like we did in the user editor. editor. So, this is the projects form where we are going to list and edit our projects. Let me run the project first. Sorry. So here is the the list of our projects. It's just a name and we can delete projects here and include new ones. So how it works? Let's let's see the code first. In the form create, we just create our repository using our global factory, so you know that the repository will be created correctly. And then we retrieve a list of T project objects from our repository. Here is the declaration of this method. It's just retrieve a T list with our T project instances. And then we define that this list of T project will be the source of the, the data source for our Aurelius data set, which, which means that the data set will use the T list of T project objects as if it was our database data. And how we bind it to the fields? We just define field names, ID and name, because, let me click here, that's, those are the proper names of our T project object class. So the T project class has properties ID and name, and we can uh, add and t integer field for id and t, t string field for name so the binding will be done automatically once the data set has the instance the object instance in memory each object instance will be a record in a data set and each field will retrieve its value from the property of the data set Finally, for saving the, the objects, we can use the insert, remove, and update events, and just call the, call the property method from our T repository class. So that's how binding it is. It's done with data sets, so it's easy to show a list of objects and edit its properties just using a data set as an interface. Note that this data set has nothing to do with database access. It just reads and writes values from the object in memory. What saves the object in the data in the database is are these calls to repository. Now to the next step, step five where I'm going to show you more ways to do data binding. In this step, we have implemented the form that will edit the issue values. Let me run the application first. Sorry. Let's create a new issue, subject, property, you can set the status, the responsible for the issue, and some description. 
Note that the project assigned is TMS Aurelius. Issue save it, and that's it. So how it's done? Again, in the issue form, we have a property with a reference to a T issue object. When this object is provided to the form, instead of manually setting the properties of all co visual controls in the form, it just set the object as a source object for the data set and then open and edit so the data set is linked to all the controls we have all we have is db controls here so for example for the subject we have data field subject this is a db memo linked to the description field and just the same as we did with the T project class, we have fields here for the T issue. There are some things different here, more advanced. First of all, instead of manually creating all the T field objects in your dataset, you can use a design time support. To add design time support, you must create a package as we did here that just includes all the classes you have in your application that are entity classes I mean Aurelius classes so once this package is compiled I can use it in my data sets to retrieve metadata about the, the class let me give you an example I drop another data set in the form and use load field definitions so we need to define the package here once the package is loaded by the designer I can use the combo here to choose which class I want to load the fields from in, the, in this case tissue note that if I open the loader again I don't need to choose the BPL it's saved it here in my IDE and I can reuse it whenever I want. So the T issue information is loaded and if I load the fields editor here you see that it already retrieves for me the fields that represent the properties in my T issue class. So that's pretty much what was done here in the dataset issue. Let me just delete here. Let's see what's defined here the subject description are regular fields so you can edit directly just as the priority field here we have the enumerated type note that let me show you here the priority property is a enumerated type so in the field it you have an integer value you can see that it, it's an integer field so it has the the value the ordinal value of the enumerated type that's why we can use it here in the radio group to define priority and status also in our project here our T issue belongs to a project and that's represented by the project property that has a reference to a T project object. So how do you display the TMS Aurelius name here, the project name? That DB test is linked to a field name named project.name. So you can use with Aurelius dataset you can use dotted names for the field names and when you use dotted names it just represents sub properties of the property there is no limit for the level so you can have for example issue dot project dot any other property in the project dot and to there is no limit for the level of number of sub properties you can you can use finally here we have a co 
lookup combo box that we use to choose the user to the where the this issue will be assigned to this is works just uh, as a lookup combo box in regular D Delphi database application you have to assign it to a lookup field so this the combo box is linked to assign it to name and assign it to name is a lookup field as you can see here that is assigned to this data set data set assigned to this data set has the list of users here is where the, the data is loaded so I get a user list from the repository and define that this user list is data for this data set then I link these fields to to the lookup note that the assign it to the key field is sorry the assign it to name the key field is assign it to which is an instance of a T user object so the lookup works fine and retrieves the object instance from the other data, data set and as you saw in the when I run the application it works uh, very well in the next step I will show you the form where release the T issue objects so now I have a list of T issue objects and we can choose the project I show you so you I here you can see the subject status priority and the name of the user where to the the task the issue is assigned to the new things here are the enumerated fields as I told you before the priority field is integer field because priority is an enumerated type but we can use if we use the name of the enumerated property dot enum name then it becomes a string field and the value is displayed directly in the grid so that's why we can directly see the name of the enumerated the enumeration here this is coming directly from the name of the enumeration these names also when we, ch when we change the, the combo here we call this update issue list which goes to the rep repository and call the method get project issues and retrieves the selected project how implement the get project issues here we use a feature in Aurelius uh, named queries so instead of just finding a object by the ID I can execute a query here so to retrieve the list of tissue objects I call find tissue objects but filter it by the project property where project ID is equal to the ID of the object pass it here so this way I can use queries to filter 
the objects I'm retrieving from the database you can use many operators here like equals greater than greater or equal is new is not new or so you have many options here and the interesting part is that Aurelius does not perform the filtering on the client side but instead it generates uh, the correct SQL statement that we will execute in the server so the database server will as usual perform the filtering and retrieving the objects for you our next step in our application will show how to create master detail if you remember our tissue class has a property comments that holds a list of t issue comment objects one issue comment object is just a just hold property date and comment and the user who made the comment we are going to allow our, our application user to edit the comments here in our old issue form we have added a new tdb grid that we hold the comments and we added a new data set name it data set comments and the difference here is that this, this data set is linked to a master data set through a data set field this field data set issue comments is, the, is created here in our issue data set so note that these fields are related to the T issue class it has a property, uh, sorry, a field named comments that relates to our property comments. Since our property comments is a T list, Aurelius will create a T dataset field that represents all comments of that issue. So that's pretty much automatic. There is a dataset field, and this comments is linked to the dataset that that's pretty much it and the grid of course is linked to this data source which in turn is linked to this data set and our fields here in the comments are also related to the properties of our T issue comment class so we have the ID the date of the comment the content of the comment the user and the username so we can display in the grid so it's done at form design level and we can add new comments here and we see our comments being added to our issue that's it just for illustration when I double click a grid here I hope I have as you have noticed there is a new form to edit the issue but this form is just created without any binding because it's just a comment field so just assign the comment property to the memo lines so you can edit so that's it okay we have our application done but as you might remember our data is saved in a local SQLite database in the next step we are going to scale our application and save data in a Firebird database how it's done well the main change here is that we use it uh, we are we are creating a global factory as a TSQLite scenario factory 
and we are just going to use the new class T Firebird Scenario Factory. Remember that this factory just is used to create a repository. This is the simple line that we use it to change our our database, and we just have to check this new class created here. It just has a method name create repository. It's just create the same database repository that requires an IDB connection interface and this get, conne get connection retrieves this interface for us. So this is this this is the how the interface is retrieved. We use instead of using a direct SQLite adapter, we are using a DB Express adapter. This DB Express adapter needs as a parameter a TSQ connection component that is just created here just as an usual DB Express application we have our connection our params here configured and that's how the interface is retrieved this is how Redis uses existing database access components like FireDuck, DB Express and third-party ones it, it comes to predefined adapters for those so usually to retrieve a IDB connection interface to connect to a database is just a single line of code where you create an adapter and you use the existing database component that you use to connect so for DB Express you just pass the TSQL connection for Fire, for Fire Doc, you just pass the TFD connection so that's pretty much it. One thing I didn't, I forgot to mention is when I created the SQLite database, I didn't show you how to create the tables and columns in the database. Aurelius does it for you with the simple code. You create a database manager, and just as the object manager, you the database manager needs the same IDB connection interface so it knows to which database it's connecting to and you just call update database this update database will retrieve the existing schema in the database and check which tables and columns are missing from it base it on the classes you define it and then it you perform the create table alter table add column statements that you need to match the database structure with the existing mapped classes so it's all automatic if you as you continue uh, creating new classes in your application you can just call update database and the class and the tables will be created in the database with the proper t with the proper fields so that's what we needed to change there is no change in the rest of the application because we don't use SQL statements there is nothing specific to SQLite that we need to change to Firebird so the same application now is connecting to an ex already existing Firebird database I use it to test so the projects are different the users are different and that's how we that's an example of an advantage of using an ORM that is that your application is a little more abstract so it's easy to change the database servers and also the as you're using objects and not f data content from the database you don't have a problem with data types type mismatch because that's your class, the ID will stay integer, name will stay string and the framework, in this case Aurelius, will take care of changing the doing the internal conversions so for example if you have a boolean property some database support boolean fields, some not so the Aurelius will do that for you and SQL server use identity for IDs Firebird use generators, so always transparent. You can use IDs as identities, generators, you can use GID, you can use string, you can use compound, composite uh, IDs, so it's very flexible. 
Finally, to conclude, I will show you the last step of our saga that is creating a data snap server using Aurelius. So this is the new the new application I've added to the R group, bug track server. It's just a regular data snap application. All of this was created with uh, the wizard. And the, the key thing here is that this issue tracker methods that will be our methods we use to we are going to provide as rest methods. We have used the same save user, get user, the same methods we have in our local connection and to implement these methods at server side we are going to use the same repository and so for example when a client calls save user we are going to call our repository and call save user. The main difference here is that our data snap server instead of receiving a T user instance it will receive a JSON, the user as a JSON and we can use the built-in JSON serializer and deserializer from Aurelius to automatically convert the JSON value received from client to a real T user object instance and then we can use that instance to save the user in the database. So pretty much everything is transparent because we use our JSON serializer from Aurelius. It takes care of Aurelius specific, specific things like the mapping, the relationship between objects, so all the JSON is properly formatted to work fine with the data snap. And from the client, the difference is that we have to create a new repository name it REST repository because the client will not access the database directly now. It will access the data snap server. So our instead of using a repository in the client we will use a data snap client. This is just the proxy client created by data, data snap automatically. It just has the the get user methods we we created in the server. And when our client calls save user from the repository, it will just call save user in the data snap server. And all you have to do is first convert our user to a JSON representation to send to the server. So that's how the client is created here. You can see that it's just one line methods. And the server, it's the same thing. It's just one line methods here to implement the server side methods and if you run now let's run the server and the client and we are asking now our instead of accessing our SQLite database directly we are using the client so if you close our client here you see that there will be a connection with her because the, the server is not available anymore last but not least since we have our data snap server providing our JSON objects we can access it from the browser. So as example here, we can just call the get user method of T issue tracker methods class. And there you go, it, there are your users here in JSON representation. And also as example, as an example, I have created uh, a web page to search for issues and show it here using JavaScript. And if you look at the source code of this JavaScript that uses jQuery, we can see that the 
the code is pretty similar to the Delphi code actually so when the user clicks the find button we call server methods dot get issue passing the ID and the issue is returned as a JSON so we just use the JSON properties here ID subject priority assign it to name description assign it to name here the priority here and to show it in the, in the web page and you can also call save issue to update the status here so for example to close this so to close the issue we just set issue dot status equal to close it and call server methods dot save issue and we can save our object from our JavaScript client cancel well that's it I hope you have enjoyed it and if you have any question if you have uh, any anything you want to need you want to know just visit our website or send an email thank you very much